Hey, GED students. Um, we're looking at a worksheet that the direction said, um, find the slope of the graph. Um, and all you had to look at was this graph here, or the slope of the line on the graph is what you're asked to do. And um, I had a student, Shelby, who struggled with number 16. So, you know, number 16, she thought, well, she said, Kate, unless I'm really misunderstanding something, the slope of this graph, number 16, well, it ought to be negative 5 over 3. And yet the answer key doesn't say negative 5 over 3. It says negative 8 over 5. And she thought, you know, well, I'm really off. There must be something that I don't understand if that's what I'm getting. Well, the first thing I'd like to point out is that those two answers are actually really similar, even if they don't look similar because they're in a fraction form. Let's turn them in a de into a decimal form in order to compare them. So um, to turn it into a decimal, I'm just going to take negative 5, and I'm going to do the implied division. A fraction bar means the same as divide, so I'm going to divide by 3. Well, negative 5 divided by 3 is negative 1.666 and so on and so forth. And then on the other hand, if I had negative 8 divided by 5, negative 8 over 5 is the same as negative 8 divided by 5, you would see I'd have negative 1.6. So there's not a huge difference in these two numbers. So first of all, Shelby, even if you didn't have exactly my answer, you were really, really close. Uh, but let's look at how you could have gotten exactly my answer. The key here is actually not that you counted wrong. The key here is that the graph is too small. It's too small to really see um, what corner I'm on. And so um, basically what I did when I wanted to do this problem was I blew, my, I blew it up. I didn't have a, um, I didn't have a printed copy. I had a computer copy, so I was able to blow it up nice and huge. Now look at number 16 now, and let's compare our two answers. So let me write them down one more time. You said negative 5 over 3. The answer key said negative 8 over 5. All right, my guess, and this is I'm usually pretty good at guessing because I've seen enough uh, student issues over the year. years is that you probably started here and came across to this point here, here, which looks, when my graph was small, like it could work. You know, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then across 3, 1, 2, 3, that's down 5, across 3, that's a slope of negative 5 over 3. But if you look at this really, really closely here, with it blown up, it's a little easier to see that I'm not perfectly on the corner. I'm close, but there's a little bit of white space in there. And you might even need to blow it up even further to check that out. So, in fact, I think I will do that. Let's blow it up even further. If this is that point we're looking at here. See that white space in there? Yeah, whereas this corner down here, we are perfectly on the corner, no white space. Let me show you what I mean. Way down here, I'm perfectly in the corner. So here's the only two places on this graph where I was perfectly in the corner, but there's a whole bunch that look close. But those are the two perfect corners. So from there, down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's down eight. And over one, two, three, four, five, over five, negative eight over five. So as you can see, if I have this really blown up, um, I can see that, but you know, with the graph as small as it was, it was really hard to see. So good news is while you're taking your GED, you can blow up the screen. You know, they do have that as an option, um, but they wouldn't be likely to have one that would be so close that it would take a vision issue like this to tell. Okay. So don't stress. And then, um, like I said, my answer and your answer were both really, really close. Um, because that point was so close, our answers were so close. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.